Cheerio then. Now, the XPS 13 has been the benchmark in 13 inch laptops for a long time now. They're the ones that started the ultra thin bezels with that infinity edge display. This is a complete new redesign with this XPS 13 9370. So can the XPS 13 retain its title for the best 13 inch ultrabook? So if you want insanely cheap Windows keys or upgrade from Windows 10 Home or even get Office 2016 at an insanely cheap price, head on down to 0 and 9. The links are in the description and I even have a discount code to make these insanely cheap prices even cheaper. Thank you to 0 and 9 for sponsoring this video. So this is my full product review. There'll be time code in the description that's near the like and subscribe button there. There'll also be links to my recommended model and at the end of this review there will be all the other reviews i've done comparing it to the macbook pro video editing review gaming review and compared to the last model so this is your one-stop shop for xps 13 everything you need to know now they start at 9.99 us and that will get you still a quad core i5 version with four gigabytes of ram which is pretty good value considering you're getting a quad core now i recommend you get as much ram as you can but in australia here start at 2099 they start at 1249 quid in the uk you can get up to core i7 8550u processors these are 15 watt parts they can burst up to 4 gigahertz up to 16 gigabytes of low power ddr3 and up to a terabyte of ssd storage the model i have here is the i5 8250u 8 gigabytes of ram and 256 gigabyte ssd and when it comes to build quality ooh, this thing is damn sexy it is the sexiest laptop out there when it comes to this rose gold and white model Alpine white deck there, sandwiched between CNC machined, rose gold aluminium, beautiful, absolutely pure class. It's very petite, that white woven glass palm rest has a nice texture to it, it's different to the soft touch on the black carbon fibre model. I think it's just top drawer when it comes to design there. It is elegant, beautiful, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Now of course having those thin bezels means that the webcam is down the bottom in the middle there, so it will look up at you. Now I've already done the video comparing it to the macbook pro it will be tagged on at the end of this video you can check that out i would not be buying a macbook pro or anything that's dual core at the moment so you need eighth generation quad core at the moment there's no comparison it is better than the macbook pro just because the macbook pros have that dual core it's only 11.6 millimeters thin 1.21 kilos 2.68 pounds it is the most petite smallest compact 13 inch out there now one place this differs to the previous generation is you do not get USB-A now and you don't get a full size micro SD card slot. They still sell the old model so if those things are important to you maybe you want the old model because you can get the 8th generation quad core in that. So when you go thinner and lighter you're going to lose these legacy ports. So on the left hand side we have two times four Thunderbolt 3 ports. So plenty of bandwidth there. On the right hand side we have USB-C and micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. Now the thing about the micro SD card slot, this is one thing that sort of differentiates it from a lot of the new 13 inches out there. I would prefer it's full size. At least you can add additional storage. At least they put that there. You also get included in the box of USB-C to type A adapter there. So at least they include that as well. When it comes to sound, this has good quality sound. Max Audio Stereo 2 times one watt speakers. They're very clean and rich sounding. All sort of ties in with this Dell Cinema. I'll give them a solid 8 out of 10 for sound, but not as good as the MacBook Pros in terms of sound, but getting up there. And it is great to watch, you know, Netflix and etc. on this device, especially with the Infinity Edge display. Now the keyboard is actually new. It's called MagniLeave or something like that. It uses magnets in the keyboard, 1.3 millimeters of travel. So that's a good amount of travel for an ultrabook it is strange to use this i got used to it it doesn't feel like a normal keyboard it takes a little bit more force to activate these keys and also when you let off the pressure it sort of has a bit of energy return it sort of pushes your finger up now once you get used to that it's super fast typing with it however i still think it's a good keyboard and it's better than a lot of ultrabooks i can say that for sure the trackpad you know it gets an 8 out of 10 it's one of the better windows trackpads you know but compared to macbook pro trackpad yeah which is a 10 out of 10 it's still not up there but it is a decent trackpad nice and smooth nice click to it it does take a little bit of force to get that click going but um it is a nice trackpad now when it comes to display there are two options 
you have a full HD non-touch option and you have a 4K version with touch. Both are edge-to-edge -edge Gorilla Glass 4 and 100% sRGB. They have the Dell Cinema, so it does really look good. I have the full HD model. As I said, they're both glossy. It's crisp, vibrant, very bright. These things get very bright. Both the displays get very bright. It's nice and contrasty. It is a cracking display. Now, when you get the 4K, that goes to another level that is ultra crisp and sharp but you will get about three hours less battery with that so do you need 4k probably is overkill but if you do want that ultra sharp crisp 4k display that option is there for you but both the displays are actually really awesome so when it comes to battery life it has a 52 watt hour battery has a 45 watt charger i could get nearly 14 hours just streaming youtube videos at 40 percent brightness it's one of the only laptops i would leave just playing videos at night come back in the morning and still be playing those videos not many laptops do that so with this full hd model you will easily get 10 hour run runs out of it just with normal web surfing etc and with that sort of general use 11 12 hours maybe you know what i mean at you know that 40 percent brightness with the 4k model you'll get around three hours less battery life so around the seven seven and a half hours battery life with the 4k model so whichever way you go you're getting good battery life pretty much class lead in there now when it comes to performance this performs pretty much better than any eighth generation quad core out there at the moment when we're talking the u series processors it can burst harder for longer and we're talking like over three gigahertz for nearly two minutes in synthetic benchmarks and in normal use it'll burst for even longer because synthetic loads are usually harder on the system you can play your casual games i was even able to play overwatch and fortnite at low settings as you'll see later in the video you know football manager minecraft it's perfect for those sort of things you can actually video edit full hd content no problem and with a few tweaks here and there you can actually edit 4k although i don't recommend this is a 4k editing machine but i will say get the 16 gigs if you can afford it because you cannot upgrade the ram the only thing you can upgrade is the m.2 ssd you can also replace the battery and the wi-fi module so in conclusion is this still the king of 13 inch ultrabooks well i would say yes the water is getting a bit muddy now because there are some ultrabooks now that are actually putting gpus in their 13 inch laptops that sort of muddies the waters a bit are they a different class or should i be comparing them to these 13 inches without gpus let me know down there in the comments what you think but i think when it comes to this white one it's definitely the sexiest classiest laptop out there it's definitely the best performing of these eighth generation quad core cpus at the moment comparing it to its competition you know macbook pro surface laptop i think it's a better buy definitely i would not be buying those at the moment because they're only dual core we'll have to wait for those laptops to be refreshed but as it stands right now this is the king of 13 inch ultrabooks so what are the cons to this laptop there's not really much to pick on maybe that the full hd is not touch display it is expensive compared to some other ultrabooks and also some other ultrabooks as i said before are putting gpus in their 13 inch laptops but in terms of just pure 13 inch ultra books this is the one to get so i'd like to thank you guys for watching give me a like if you appreciate this video 